What's going on, Squirrel Squad? It's your boy, the Squirrel, and today I'm going to try not to get blocked. Uh, boy, have I been getting my ass kicked lately on both channels uh, by getting getting things that are blocked. So hopefully this one will come through. This is actually a suggestion from a viewer uh, named uh, David Brown. And uh, David said, why don't you try your hand at some Welsh comedy? And he suggested specifically the, um, the Barry Welsh uh, show. And... Uh, this, and he said the mayor of Fishguard, and then when I typed in, this is what came up. This is Fishguard Welsh humor. I don't know. <laughs> These guys look like they made their own teens with Ninja Turtles costumes. I'm about to find out what this is about. I have no clue. So, bear with me. Let's enjoy it together. If it's your first time here, make sure you subscribe. Here you go. The West Wales Tortoise Impersonation Society held a recruitment drive over the weekend in the hope of attracting new members. But with a full tortoise outfit costing up to £25,000, they could only find one person willing to shell out. <laughs> shell out. <laughs> it turns down just a bit. Oh, man. I can already see what I'm getting into. They were, to they were tortoises, not turtles. I was wrong, but I was close. <laughs> they used to say that one of the worst things about being in hospital was the food. But that's all changed at St. Sardine's Hospital Fishyard, where pioneering chef Lloyd Gross has put the patient's own organs on the menu. Here's Mrs. Thomas enjoying a nice grilled kidney, and she knows it's fresh because it was only removed from her this morning. With all the worries about BSE and salmonella, it's much safer for people in hospital to eat themselves. But I think I'd steer clear of her nuts. Fish guy. Do you say steer clear of the nuts? <laughs> What the hell? Our first Jewish pub is about to open. The bar mitzvah will cater for drinkers of all religions, but during happy hour, only those who have been circumcised will get cut price drinks. <laughs> cut price drinks. These, these are good jokes. I mean, I, I'm liking the jokes so far. <laughs> and finally, Hollywood legend East Clintwood was in town today to receive the freedom of Fishguard from Mayor of Fishguard, Mr. Kerry Twat. This great honor is in recognition of East Clintwood's contribution to Welsh culture, with films such as The Outlaw Josie Wales, and of course, The Good, The Bad, and The Swansea. I spoke to Mr. Clintwood after the presentation. I don't know, I don't know what Swansea is, if it's a town or what. We have, we have a town named Swansea here in Massachusetts, so I guess that might be it. I don't know. Mr. Clintwood, you've just been given the freedom of Fishguard. Does this mean that you prefer Fishguard to Haverford West? Yeah, I don't know. I, uh... well, let me put it another way. People in Haverford West say that Fishguard has had it as a major player in world affairs. Do you think that Fishguard is on the way out? No, I don't think it's on the way out. I just think uh, that now they'll try to maybe modernize a little bit. You mean maybe. electricity and proper sanitation and all that? I think they're going to get away from the, the obvious cliches. Yeah. Young Clint E. Oh, sorry, East Clintwood is. Electric light would be a bit obvious, wouldn't it? <laughs> and finally, Mr. Clintwood, do you think that you'll move the fish guard now? No, definitely not. <laughs> East Clintwood, there, who will soon be moving to fish guard. <laughs> and Pillock and his coracle. Yeah, we're in color now. <laughs> yeah, lovely to see you. There's something different about you this week. Oh, no, there isn't. I made a mistake. <laughs> Garrett, I must admit I was a bit shocked when I found out what your challenge is this week because you challenged yourself to eat your own coracle. <laughs> yeah? Why, why do you want to eat your own coracle? Mainly because it's a challenge. <laughs> First of all, it's a challenge for me. Secondly, it's a challenge for the coracle. And again, it's a personal challenge for me. Yes, yes. Well, well you say that, Garrett, don't you? You say, but I, I think there's more to it than that. Has it got anything to do with last week's challenge to find yourself a girlfriend? Has it? Because uh, I heard that you failed, as usual, but the coracle did very well. <laughs> and spent the night with a young lady from Rill. <laughs> I had to look up coracle. It's a, according to this, it's a small, it's a, especially in Wales and Ireland, it says, it's a small round boat made of wick, wicker work covered in watertight material propelled with a paddle. This guy's going to eat his boat. You, you had to paddle home without the coracle. Is that right? Oh, I can see you don't want to talk about it. Okay, all right. So, so this week's challenge then? This week's challenge is to eat the coracle. That's, that's going to take a while, isn't it? Get through it. Could take anything from 
between 12 and 50 hours. Yeah. Aren't you, aren't you a bit worried that the seat might stick in your throat? It could be very dangerous, and yet on the other hand, uh, it can be all right. Oh. So you're optimistic about all this, then? Oh, very optimistic. Oh. I will do it. Yeah. Talking uh, on a long, long term. Long term. Oh, I will do it. Yeah. Yeah. I will do it. Uh, it's first time. First time, yeah. Well, you, you'd want to have it when it's hot, wouldn't you, really? You don't want to be eating cold coracle sandwiches for weeks after. <laughs> so what do, what do you do? Will you have the paddle as an hors d'oeuvre? Hors d'oeuvre. Hors d'oeuvre. Hors d'oeuvre. Hors And I suppose the main course then will be coracle in the basket, will it? it? <laughs> Already is in the basket, is it? Sort of a joke, they get not you? <laughs> okay, fair enough, fair enough. Fair enough. <laughs> Never mind. Ladies and gentlemen, get out of I like how that one up where he's like, something's changed about you. Oh, never mind. No, it hasn't. I'm going to start, <laughs> think I'm gonna start using that. <laughs> Fact. Global warming is actually happening. Fact. Every time you drive your car, you make it worse. Fact. You're a stupid, thoughtless bastard. <laughs> so what's the answer? The Gwilym Envirovan's the answer. Sustainable, safe, but above all, stylish. The Gwilym Envirovan doesn't just turn corners, it turns heads as well. And on a full tank of straw, the Envirovan has a range of 500 yards. So it's ideal for those journeys where it would be more sensible to walk. <laughs> I think it's hauling ass. <laughs> Why don't you tell him about the potatoes, you pervert? <laughs> Why do you not? The only man in Wales to get VD off a potato. No, that's not... It wasn't... It wasn't... Oh, v yeah. Been hanging around the greengrocers recently, fingering the King Edwards. Oh, stop all that. I can just see you now in the kitchen, peeling the little brown skins and looking at them like a rabid parakeet. What? What do they know about you in the chip shop? You potato sexual. Potato <laughs> sexual. <laughs> it's a potato sexual. Friday night, he prefers a baked. Saturday, he's all in on the mashed. <laughs> Hello. If you mention sexual equipment to any woman in Fishguard, the chances are she'd think of men's winkies. The chances are she'd be thinking of men's winkies anyway. But that's all changing. I'm standing in Cleo Lane. And just over there is Fishguard's very first sex shop, Rimbasher's. What story? Mr. Rimbasher, what sort of people have been coming here? I don't mean... <laughs> Take a look at the background here. We got uh, a love doll uh, in the package. A love doll blown up that looks like a freaking Muppet. Uh, what is that, like a spike collar or bracelet over there? That's like a corsage, I believe. Uh, just a strap, I don't know, maybe tie something down with. Um, not sure what the top item here is. I don't know what the hell that is. Uh, looks like some leather undies down below and of course the handcuffs. I don't know if that's like a, um, um, like a like a knot holder or if it's a fanny pack or bum bag bum bag in a dirty way. all types of people intelligent educated people some that aren't so intelligent stupid people they've asked us a few questions about the products because obviously this is all new to them you know a lot of them have never seen any of this merchandise before you know so there are bound to be a lot of curiosity a lot of questions which you have to expect with this type of shop Suddenly, everyone's gone sex mad. Harry God, you're a milkman. How many times a week are you copulating with your customers now? They're about 400, maybe more. <laughs> oh, 400? What about hand jobs? How many of those have you had today? I, I'm going to be honest with you. I really thought about doing uh, like a sketch comedy channel at one point, and then things kind of changed. I was just end up doing reaction stuff. But um, one of the things I was going to do was like, find old no longer copywritten interviews and stuff and then like interject myself in between asking ridiculous things that's exactly what this guy's doing 
four times in an hour by a policewoman. How long am I the law? <clears throat> Fishguard Council is so concerned at the effect all this sex is going to have on the birth rate that they're carrying out pregnancy tests on the urine of every woman in Fishguard. <laughs> Even local celebrity Gerard Pillock is a customer of the sex shop. Gerard, you were in Rimbash this morning buying a load of bondage gear. Why? Mainly because it's a challenge. Uh, first of all, it's a challenge for me. Secondly, it's a challenge for the Coracle. Bloody hell, Gerard. I knew you liked the Coracle, but I didn't realize it was a sex thing. It has been done before. Oh, I know, but it's still disgusting, though, isn't it? No, let, let's stop there. Stop. Stop the camera. News that Mr. Rimbasher's sexual equipment has entered the lives of everyone in Fishguard. And one or two objects have entered more than just their lives, if you know what I mean. <laughs> Mr. Rimbasher. I can't get over how much that doll behind him just looks like a screwed up Muppet. It's so weird. Like, the intention is to use it for uh, sexual pleasure. Uh, I don't know. It, it looks like a, I don't know, like a Muppet or like a, an old man. I don't know. It's weird. Just, it's just weird. It seems that the old way of doing things, you know, the cucumber up the ass, the bowl of fresh fruit up the funny, that's all in the past now. Don't you think that's rather sad? I don't say sad. Um, people or, or publicity companies, newspapers have been pushing the permissive society, the permissive society for a long time, which I don't think really exists. Oh, yes, it does. There's a branch in Haverford West. So let you know I didn't miss the cucumber in the ass. Just find the right time to mention it. I wish I would have missed it now. Sorry, sorry. Uh, one last thing. Um, I couldn't help noticing that you're selling posters of David Blunkett in the new. Why is that? I think it's needed. Right. Thanks very much, Mr. Rinbasha. Oh, sorry. This is Hugh Pew in Fisker. <laughs> 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 A tire mark on the back of his jacket got run over the way of the interview. What the hell? <laughs> Finally, the town of Fishguard got itself a fire brigade today after years of campaigning. The volunteer force of part time firemen was soon in action. A note is passed to Mr. Tup in the post office, informing him of the blaze. And he quickly alerts his brave firefighting colleagues who drop everything and rush to the scene to do battle with the conflagration. Who's that? Oh, boy. 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 Right, get right. Uh, uh, Pick them up. Uh, uh, what is it? Uh, Tell me. <laughs> we got it, yeah. It was just pure bad luck that the fire went out two hours later. <laughs> Mayor of Fishguard, Mr. Kenny Twat, said he was relieved that Fishguard's people could now set fire to their homes in complete safety. I love that the mayor of Fishguard's name is Kenny Twat. <laughs> Well, you'll be relieved to know that I've got another job at HTV. I didn't for that Barry Welsh show anyway, all the muck and filth. We're glad to see the back of it. Yes, I don't mind saying that uh, HTV is going to be much cleaner from now on. Uh, here you go. <laughs> oh, for <laughs> sake, what stupid girl put that there? Yeah. All right, that appears to be the end of it. Uh, that was a nice little compilation of bits. I, I laughed a lot. I, I laughed a lot. I had some comments on that stuff. Uh, the Barry Walsh was good. I mean, that was a fun little uh, fun little compilation of oddities. Definitely oddities. Um, but, uh, David, man, I appreciate you recommending this. This was fun. It was something different. You know, that's what I've been trying to do lately is, you know, some different stuff. You know, I'm still doing comedy and stuff, but I'm just trying to, trying to peg it around a little bit and kind of, you know, script pig goes in the round hole make it fit you know what i'm saying anyway a little kindergarten aggression coming back 42 years later anyways i hope you enjoyed this <laughs> I, I i thought it was good i'll catch you guys soon all right be good take care of yourselves take care of each other take care of barry welsh i'm out of here scroll up mm -hmm.